catch myself help me Welcome back to season four, Battered Bruce, Not Broken. We are super excited to have you here with us. Listen, if you've been watching us over our past few seasons, then you know it keeps getting better because we have 12 powerful women who are going to be sharing their stories with you of how they have been able to overcome. And tonight, just like every other show, we have a phenomenal lady who's going to share her story with you. And I can't wait to introduce her to you. But before we go any further, if you have not done it already, I want you to go right ahead and hit that subscribe button just down below and make sure that you are subscribed to this channel so that you can be kept abreast. All right, let's head into it. So welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so happy to have you. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Good. So How are you? I am doing well. I am blessed, definitely blessed. I'm excited. I can't wait for you to share your story tonight. Uh, before we get into your story, though, I want you to introduce yourself to uh, the women who are watching here tonight and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Okay. My name is Melisha Carter Linton. I am a Christian. I'm a mother of two. I am an auditor. And I'm also an author, and I have a book from bitterness to betterness, right? And right, and I'm just a easygoing, kind person. Yes, yes. Listen, Woo. I love it. But how do you find the time? You said I'm a mother, I'm an author, I'm an auditor. You know, you, how do you find the time to do all that stuff? Well, I do it with guidance from my heavenly Father. And my children are actually teenagers, so they can actually take care of themselves somewhat. <laughs> teenagers, I tell you, you have, militia. you have good genes. Yes, I'm <laughs> you, blessed you with you. Like a, you look like a teenager yourself, so that's good. That's a plus. That's definitely a plus. So just like every other woman, you have a phenomenal story. And I want you to tell us a little bit about where it all started for you. We're just going to peel back the layers a little bit so that they can get just a view, just a small view, a window view into your life. Okay, so my main story that I like to share, you know, is that basically growing up, I think there's always some adversity one oh. after another, but, and I also suffered from self-esteem growing up, oh. but um, I was there struggling with my self-esteem and then, you know, I got married young and I think um, not being healed from my past hurt, I don't know if, if I did a good job at marriage, but also what made it worse for me was that my partner wasn't very loving and kind. He started off that way, but over time he changed into a different person. So, so with my low self-esteem and being treated poorly, um, I really had a, a rough time. So I would say I was in a loveless marriage for a period of time. Wow. Wow, okay. So you said you met him, you've been married for a while. So how was that when you guys meet? How did you meet actually? Tell us a little bit about how you guys were able to meet. So we had a mutual friend. There's somebody that knew him and knew me, but we did, never knew each other. So that yeah. person had introduced us. He told me that he was going to find me a perfect husband. Wow. <laughs> a perfect, he was going to find a perfect man for me. But as I said, it didn't start off bad. So it was the kind of person that was kind, always giving me a listening ear, you know, helping mm -hmm. me, motivating me and helping me along emotionally. Mm -hmm. But then after we got, so we had a, a child, then we got married. And after that, he like 
changed into a different person. He didn't have the time of day anymore to listen to me. Uh -huh. Right. Um, he said that he had his friends before me. So he's not going to put me before his friends. Wow. But he called me selfish. And I was saying, wow, you knew all of these things and you planned on not spending time with me or our son at the time. Uh -huh. So why did you get married? It was it, if you knew that I was not the person you wanted to marry, why did you get married, right? Uh -huh. So I knew that we got married young, like in our twenties. So over time, you know, we I'm expecting growth and maturity. Yes. And 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 as the years rolled by I wasn't seeing that growth and math Purity that I expected. Wow. So, yeah. so did you, before you guys made the decision to split up, did you consider to do like counseling or anything like that? There was that a, discuss, a topic of discussion for you guys? So the problem was um, he never had time for communication. If I suggested um, counseling, he would say that there's nothing wrong with him. I'm, there was something wrong with me. Uh -huh. Right. So, and if we, I don't think our situation required causing, I think it required communication. And if the other party does not want to communicate, there's no way counseling would help that. Uh -huh. So his idea of communication is when I try to highlight an issue that I'm having. And sometimes you turn that issue on me and then at the end of it, you'll be the one with the same problem. Uh -huh. So he turned himself into the victim at the end of the conversation. Right. And then over time, it got worse to the point where if I tried to have a conversation about what I was thinking or feeling, he started to shout on top of what I was saying. So, so imagine you're in a neighborhood and you're trying to have a simple conversation and this person is shouting on top of their voice. Uh -huh. when, you, when you step out of the house, everybody's looking at you like, are you okay? Uh -huh. because of what they're hearing on the outside it gives the impression that probably i'm being slaughtered on the inside right uh -huh. because of how it sounds but yeah it was just loud verbal abuse and it i there's no way i could communicate with somebody like that yeah so, so yeah. yeah so how long into the marriage did you uh were you able to recognize okay we have a communication problem. How long did it take for you to see that? Well, I, I guess I saw it midway through, but as I said, we got married young. So mm -hmm. I was giving him time to mature and I, cause you know, we're both getting older. As yeah. So I'm expecting you with time. You're an adult, you're a parent, you have children coming up. There's got to be a point where you stop and think, is this the environment that I want from my child, mm -hmm. right? So I was not getting that from him. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm trying to speak to him to tell him what is not working or whatever. But as I said, at the end of every conversation, he's a victim at the end of it. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Do you find so, you Sorry, go ahead. So it's true. Um, you know, reading and learning and being exposed to other information, I realize that that's what a narcissist does, mm. right? So, so when I realized what was happening to me, and that is, I decided that it wasn't going to get any better. So it's best if I took myself away. Mm -hmm. And at any point as you were going through that, when you realized, okay, this is not going to work and we're going to definitely have to go our separate ways, did you feel any form of guilt? Did you blame yourself for anything? Uh, tell me about the emotions that you were feeling when you had to make that decision to just leave him behind. Well, so um, the decision to leave him behind, I think over the years, he, he was preparing me for not having him around. What do I mean by that? Oh. Um, most of the time, he was not at home with myself or the children. So we're there and they're asking me, mommy, is daddy coming today? I'm like, I don't know, you'd have to call him on his phone. Oh. 
-huh. right? And so, and then, so he's always either at work or hanging out with friends. Uh -huh. And he's always, so if it's not at work, it's with friends. So me and the children were by ourselves most of the time, or if I'm at work, they would be with their grandmother, uh -huh. right? So it, he made the transition easy for us because he has been absent for critical periods. Yeah. So we have learned how to survive mm -hmm. without him around. So leaving him behind, it wasn't a challenge because mm -hmm. we are being prepared for it. Prepared for it. But you never blame yourself for, you never said, you know, it was my fault. You never felt as though it was your fault that the marriage didn't work or anything like that. Yes. I, I, some point yes i feel like um you know self-assessment you look over to see what you could have done better mm -hmm. but when you're doing that process it's best to do it with the other party so you can work it through but um i realized that irrespective of what i did there's always something to complain about mm -hmm. and it got to a point where um if I try saying something, like he didn't want to hear what I was saying, so that's where the, the shouting and carrying on would take place, as if I didn't have a voice anymore. Oh. And at that point, I realized I was losing my peace and I wasn't settled in my spirit. I didn't like the way I was feeling. I decided I'd rather, um, I, d I didn't care what people would want to think about me being divorced. Yes, at first you would feel what, 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 what 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 are persons going to think about you, you know? Because you know, the Bible requires us to till until that do you part. Yeah. But that's what the those are what the vows said that we should do, right? Mm -hmm. So and then you you think of you know, people going to look at you funny and so but at the end of the day, the people are not the ones feeling the neglect and all that you're feeling. You're the one that's feeling it. That's right. And at the end of the day, when you're miserable and, and sad, the people won't be there. It will yeah. just be you and yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yeah. yeah. Wow. So how old were your, because um, you said children. So how many children do you have? I have two okay. children. How old were they when you, um, when you guys separated? So... That would have been like um, late 2020, early 21. So my son would have been, um, what would it be? In his 16 thereabouts, and his sister would have been about uh, what, 12 thereabouts. And did, uh, how was that for them? You know, because you know, you said that he made the process easy for you to move on because he was really absent. But how did they feel? Like, were they able to share how they felt with you? Or how was that for you as a mom? You know, because I know there's a lot of statistics that goes around that when parents break up, that it really has an effect on the children. How was that for you? Um, that was a difficult time of transition for my son, especially because he was getting ready to do his CSEC exams. Mm -hmm. Right, so I had to be there supporting him and trying to keep a positive environment around him. And his sister was making that transition to going to high school. So I, I prayed and I worked really hard at coaching them and keeping them focused yeah. on, on the matter at hand. And also, I tried to keep us busy when they're not doing schoolwork. I tried my best to keep us busy doing extracurricular activities. activities sorry so that we could distract ourselves but i think the main challenge was that he was trying to paint me as a bad guy during that process when i moved out uh -huh. so every day he would come by and like i guess basically tell them bad things about me some of them made up or some of them i mean we all have weaknesses we all make mistakes so what he did was compile i guess all the wrongs that i did and those that he fabricated and uh -huh. told them stories too. And that was very distracting for them, especially my son preparing for exam. So I had to help work really hard to keep him focused. But as I said before, the, him not being around physically, we were all basically used to that part. 
But I think in during that transition phase when we were trying to move away from the negative environment and get our feet on the ground steady, yeah, he was the one that was causing most of the problem. Because mm. we basically, I basically just wanted to be at peace and to mm. live my the rest of my days in peace. Yeah. And how long did it take for you to bounce back? Because now well, you're separated, how long did that take for you to bounce back? So, uh, so in addition to, to when that transition, so so what caused that decision to make the transition, right? Um, I was in a car accident in 2020. So in that, that time when I had that car accident, I was had some injuries and I was in immense pain physically, mm -hmm. right? I was going to do a lot of tests, taking medicine, all that wasn't working. And then I realized during that season that based on his actions, I think he'd prefer I died in the car crash. Wow. So based on what I saw I and I real and I look back during that moment, the light bulb moment that I had during that car crash, I realized that I wasn't living, I was just existing. Mm -hmm. And I decided that, that during that season that I was not going to spend the rest of my life um, just existing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to live. Yeah. Right? So, so it's during that whole accident recovery transition season, that's when the, the bounce back started. Mm -hmm. And I'm still working on it. Mm -hmm. I, am I, I'm, there are some things physically challenging to me but um i did physiotherapy so i'm making the best of it mm -hmm. but my hand still works so i can write and i can speak and the rest of my body is working fine so that is how i looked at it when i was lying there in pain yeah my legs might not be the strongest right now but the rest of my body is working mm -hmm. so right and i realized that god kept me alive and he saved me for a purpose yeah. And it is in that in this season, because I'm still in the season. So it's in this season that I'm here on your show. It's in this season that I've written a book. Wow. And this is the this is the me now living season. Mm -hmm. This is the living season, the not the non-surviving season. Yes, 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 yes. So tell me about the book. How what 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 got you to write the book? Because based on everything that you went through, what was that moment that made you go like, I need to write a book? Like, you know that this is the time for you to write this book. Well, um, so how it started, I used to enter local write, a local writing competition and I won mm -hmm. bronze medals. So I wanted to get gold. So I was searching for any writing class or such to, um, to improve my writing, to get a gold medal. So in that searching season, that's when I was in that car crash and I realized that if I had died in that car crash, what would I have to leave for my children? So the motivation was, all right, I'll just write a book. Yeah. So I'll write a book to leave it for them and whoever comes after me as a legacy so that my children will always have me with them when I'm no longer around. Mm -hmm. So that is what um, the motivation behind it. And I just, and I use it as therapy for myself. Mm -hmm. What I did was just place everything that I know and experience yeah. and I put it in the book so that um, I know somebody somewhere might find value in it. Yes. It might help another female that is struggling, mm -hmm. probably joining in, 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 in life and just want to see the light of day. Mm -hmm. And give us the title of your book again. So it is from Bitterness to betterness, the principles to change your outlook on life. Mm -hmm. You heard that, guys. From bitterness to betterness, the principles to change your outlook on life. And where can, if someone's watching right now and they say, oh, my God, I love that. Can, where can they get a copy? Where do they go? Well, they can contact me on I'm on Instagram at Malaysia Carter Writes. The book is also on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I'm on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, Malaysia Carter Writes. 
Okay. So guys, it. It. You heard it there. Don't worry if you missed it. I'll make sure before we wrap up that she repeats so that you can get it to as well. And that's amazing that God will allow some things to happen in our life so that we can tell our story, so that our story can help rescue others, you know, because sometimes we don't understand why we're going through some things. And the first thing we say is, Lord, why me? You know, could why you pick me? You could have picked someone else, you know. I don't think I qualify for this role, but there's a reason why you have been chosen because there is something about your story that is going to help someone else who is right now going through their story. So I really want to commend you for, you know, for saying yes and accepting that call and going ahead and writing your book because now women can read it, men can read it, and they can be blessed by it, you know, by applying those principles that you would have taught them. So I want to ask, you know, so you've been through all of that, but who was your support team during that process? Who was your support team? Well, I had some friends that were supporting me, you know. Um, I also have my pastors that were there supporting me and praying for me. And I also, my my boss, she introduced me to a, a, a counseling series that was being held at our church. Mm-hmm. So it's in that um those coaching sessions are counseling sessions sorry that i got exposed to to my experience what what type of personality person that i was living with so it was in that experience that i found out well i guess another light bulb came on and realized that this wasn't going to change because this is how this person is is have a personality type for it and the psychologists know this type of people Mm-hmm. right so those were my support that's interesting that god would use your boss you know you wouldn't expect that that would be the connect but that's amazing that you were able to you know go there and do that so how long did it take for you to go through that healing process because you know he wasn't just an Irish guy that was your husband that's the father of your children that's that's a lot and then you had the accident on top of that you know that's a lot to have to juggle how long did it take for you to heal do you mean physically? Uh, well, well, more spiritually, because it more emotionally, I would say. How long did it take for you to heal emotionally? Well, I think I'm still healing, because as I said, it wasn't that long ago. So I'm still in the healing phase. There's a lot of things that are currently being worked on to finalize some processes. So I'm still in the healing process. And it is my faith that has been keeping me. So during this season, I've been spending more time reading my Bible, praying more, and mm-hmm. finding um, um, fellowship with persons of the Christian faith. So yeah. I'm finding my co- community wherever they are, Christian community, and I align myself with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. And I mean, I asked that question because, you know, most times, sometimes we tell ourselves that we, and I like that you are being honest here because you said you're still going through that. And it's okay to be still going through that healing process because it doesn't have a set time. You know, sometimes we can see our friends or we see other people who would have gone through something that is similar to what we've been through. And we think that because that person has received their healing that we should have received ours by now. But the thing is, it's different. It doesn't go based on it's a set time or anything. It goes based on you. There's a lot that you have to unpack because many times we have things that are hidden and we have a lot of things hidden within us that we don't talk about. And if it's something that we talk about, we would never mention it in a in a particular crowd. And there's things that we are still, you know, ashamed of and different things that we don't even understand or even maybe a trigger for us. And because we're not discussing those triggers, we are not able to get the help. So I really just want to share that with those persons who are watching right now. But that might be you right now. You may be thinking, you know, I should have been healed by now because this thing happened like four or five, ten years ago. Why am I still here? It's because there's some issues issues that you have not addressed there's some things that you have hidden that you've buried very deep within and you have not dealt with it so on the outside appearance it looks like you're fine it looks like it's okay but that emotional self that is on the inside that is covered and buried that's the part that we really need to deal with so Melissa I have to ask if you had to um if there was a woman right now and she's watching us right now and she's in a similar position right now as where you were what would be your words of encouragement to her well first of all 
um, being depressed or sad or unhappy is a, it's a very difficult and lonely place to be. So I know right now she'd be lonely, but I want her to remember that she is here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. God created her and he knew her before she was born. So she, what she should do probably is come out of her house, find some good Christian brethren and find community, persons that would help her, push her forward. Right, and that is why I'm here today because somebody is holding my hand, and persons have helped me up and pulled me up. So she should not stay alone. Find somebody or a group of persons to help her. Yes, yes, well said. Find someone is important. There's strength in numbers. There's strength in numbers, and there's always someone that you can lean on. So, if you had the opportunity to do things differently. Would you change anything about your uh, about your story? Is there anything about your story that you will change? Well, um, <laughs> I would prefer an easier story <laughs> like the rest of us. But I realized during all my time and all my pain and all my struggles, that is when I'm most su successful, sorry. Yeah. I'm most successful when I'm faced with adversity. That's when my muscles grow. That's when my I think more. That's when I pray more. Yeah. So even though it's very difficult and painful going through, you know, the trenches and the valleys, but sometimes the valley is not a bad place. It's where you're being groomed, you're being prepared for, for greater. And it is in the valley that I wrote my book. So the valley can be a good place or a bad place. It depends on how you what you think of it, what you make of it. Mm -hmm. Are you going to sink? Are you going to swim? Are you going to listen to what the people are saying? Are you going to listen to what God is saying? That's right. That's right. right. Well said. So at any time, did you feel like, did you feel like giving up? Well, giving up is not an op option now that you have, um, when you have children, right? Because if you give up, what example are you setting for them? If That's you right. give up, are you going to show them that when life gets hard, you just roll over and play dead? I don't know. Mm -hmm. No. So giving up no is not an option. Probably when I was younger without children, mm -hmm. I would have thought about giving up a few times, but God wanted me to do something in this season. So he gave me purpose and gave me children. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. What is the one thing that you would want for your children to be able to, to say about you? You know, having everything you've been through, but that one thing that if they say this about you, it will make you feel proud. What would be that one thing? Oh, um, that she was a Christian and she believed in God to help her through her struggles and that she fight, she fought she fought she never stopped fighting yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's good and, and this is a similar question but i still have to ask it because what are some of the lessons that you uh you strive to ensure that you are able to teach your children because you, you spoke earlier about giving up is not an option you don't want your children to think that when some times get hard that you just give up so what is another thing that you would want a lesson that you would want for them to take away from your circumstance because they had the front row seat. They saw how things were, but what would be that lesson that you want them to take away? Okay, so the lesson that I want them to take from, from away from this is that it's very important to be independent. Hmm. Independent in that you think for yourself, independent that you're able to take care of yourself so yeah. you don't have to depend on anybody else to control how you spend, where you sleep, where you eat. So one would be being independent. The other would be to communicate or you communicate with somebody of a different gender. Yeah. And for my son, I want him to know that women are to be respected, right? Yes. That they are not to be walked on or stepped on. They are equal partners in relationships. And for my daughter, I want her to know that um, she should be respected and honored, and others, honored sorry, as a wife when she gets to that point mm -hmm. and that she's able also to be making her own decisions yeah. and she should know when she's not being respected and she should not take less than she deserves from a man. Yeah, yeah. well 
well said. I hope you guys are taking notes here. <laughs> I hope you guys are taking notes because it's important that you understand that you are worthy, you deserve it, and you must and shall, should be respected. So we're coming close to an end, but I just have a few more questions as, as we share a little bit more because this is a very interesting topic in terms of as we talk about something so much as marriage, because we know marriage is very secret to God. It's very special to God. So for those women out there who are in their process right now of waiting for their husbands to come, what are some of the things that you would want to notify them of or encourage them or what type of advice would you want to give to that woman out there who is planning for marriage right now? So planning for marriage, um, if you have any past hurt or any um, form of unforgiveness or bitterness, um, if you're suffering from low self-esteem, I say get yourself healed first before thinking about adding somebody else to your life that is going to be demanding more of you because this is something, it's a lifelong investment so if you're not ready to give off your 100%, um, and it's teamwork, so you have to communicate, you have to work together, you have to plan together. It can't be that one person is planning and the, and the one person is going left and right. It's teamwork, so you have to work together, right? And decisions should be made together. Nobody else should have a say in your relationship, only God, right? So it would be three of you, the man, the woman, and God. You don't need no sister-in-law or mother-in-law or nobody um, being in your relationship with you. That's where a problem begins. Mm -hmm. Also, ensure that your husband is an independent thinker. That means he doesn't have to consult anybody else before you are able to make a decision, right? He can sit with you and you can plan together, right? Make sure that if you are an ambitious person and you're always looking at what is next, the next goal that you want to achieve, ensure that the person that you're going to marry also is aggressive about their personal improvement and their goals, right? Because you don't want somebody then who's going to be jealous of you when you're trying to get up to the top. Are they throwing roadblocks in your way to, mm -hmm. to, to stop you from getting there, right? It should be, it's, as I said, you're on a team and if one person win, everybody win and you can win together. That's right. Right? That's right. Well said. Ladies, I told you this is powerful. I hope you are taking notes because she's really dropping some gems here tonight. You know, I have to ask, you know, because you said something there that triggered a question for me. You know, in your process, as you went through your, you know, your experience and what you had encountered, you know, at any time during your marriage, did you feel like you had to dim your light uh, or, you know, or kind of give up on some dreams or desires that you had because right now the marriage needed your full attention? At any time, did you feel forced to, you know, to set your own needs aside? Um, well, I, I'm always hunting for a next goal or a next target and I was that way when this person met me. Uh -huh. when, he, when, he, when we met, I was getting ready to go to university, right? Uh -huh. So so I guess from the outside, you know that I am a, a go-getter. So what he was doing at that point as well was going to school. Uh -huh. And then, so over time, I you now came to, I deduced that he was pretending like he was a go-getter to, to because I guess I wouldn't have paid him any money if he wasn't seem as if he was going somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, so that another lesson that I could um, give for the, your listeners or viewers as well is that um, be, be, when you're praying for an husband, make sure you're praying for discernment as well. Make sure it's not somebody putting on a show, a wolf wearing sheep attire, right? You have to, you have to be careful because people can pretend well, but at some point, their, their true self will, will come out in, in little spaces and little cracks here and there. So pay attention to the person that you're with. And I, I, I never felt that I should dim my light because uh -huh. this is who I am, right? But 
what I realized though is that sometime when I'm when uh, targets are at milestone that I would have gotten to, I was faced with opposition. I remember when I got my first little car, you know, I was taking the bus so that mm -hmm. was a little hectic. And I got my first little car and I did tell him that I was going to get a car. And when he saw the car, he was the most upset person or angry person on earth. So he didn't know I was getting a car and after me showing him photos of this car for months, mm -hmm. right? So it, it, it didn't, I didn't get the impression that he was very fond of me getting my own car because my own car meant I was independent and my own car meant that me and the little ones would have jumped in my little car and we could go wherever we wanted. Yeah. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to control our movement because they were independent. And I gather from this personality type, control is a big thing for uh -huh. him. So that another a lesson there, gems, as you said, for the ladies, watch about, watch for control. If they're, they're not liking you having your independence, they like to control how you spin yeah. and what you do, watch, be careful of that as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, listen, that's a gem indeed. You really want to be, because as you were sharing there just now, what really stood out for me is that you want to be careful when you go into a relationship. And I say relationship first, because you build a relationship, a friendship, before you go to marriage, right? And in that process, you want to be with someone who can celebrate you. You want to be with someone who gets excited about the things that you get excited about because they want the best for you. So that's something that you want to watch. If right now you're in a relationship and you recognize, just like Malisha shared earlier, and you are talking about things that you want to do and you can see that that person isn't that excited. They're kind of like saying things to try to throw you off or change your mind about what you want to pursue. That's a red flag. You don't have to question it. That's a red flag because you want someone to be able to, you want to be able to be their cheerleader and they can be your cheerleader to cheerlead exactly. you as well because it's about you guys building together and not building separately. So I have to ask because uh, because I'm getting, and this is a lot of stuff that you went through, but have you gone into that place where you were able to say, I forgive him? Because it was a lot of pain. It was a lot of hurt that happened there. Were you able to completely forgive him? Yes, I, 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 have, I have forgiven him. I have no, no. So here is a why I do yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I was in a car crash. I survived. And I realized that I'm here for a purpose. I found my purpose in that healing car crash season. Yeah. I found my purpose and I realized that most of the things that happened to me, as you said at the beginning, is for me, my, my story to help somebody else. Yeah. So I'm going to now walk in my purpose and that means I cannot carry baggage because this new purpose, this purpose requires me going to new levels, doing new things and I can't carry dead weight with me and unforgiveness is dead weight, mm -hmm. right? So I, I can't carry that, right? So I've forgiven him mentally, I've moved on and I'm, I'm healing and I'm meeting new people. And I think one of the things that helped me as well, as I said earlier, was finding a community, meeting new people. Yeah. yeah so that's what I've been doing, meeting new people and being exposed to new things, new, new opportunities, new experiences. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that has really, um, I just hope and pray that, um, that he changes for his benefit and for the benefit of his children. Yeah. And that he turns in, um, come to, I guess, be honest with himself and tries to heal himself as well. Mm -hmm. But as for me, I've moved on. I'm looking on to greater things and more success and more interviews of this nature. Mm -hmm. There you go, guys. I love it. I love it. She said unforgiveness is dead weight. And I love the way how you, how you brought that down because it really is. So if you are in that same place right now and you can definitely relate to her story and you are not in that place as yet where you have been able to forgive first yourself because I know we spend a lot of time blaming ourselves. I should have seen the red flags. I should have known better. I should have listened to this person or that person. And all these things come to our minds after the fact. It's like you get hindsight, right? And you start thinking about all these things and blaming yourself. I want you to go right ahead and forgive yourself forgive yourself it, it didn't happen because of you it just happened you know forgive yourself and then forgive that person 
who would have hurt you by their actions because it's not about i know sometimes we say oh we don't want to let them go because letting them go letting go and saying you forgive them is like saying it was okay to hurt me and sometimes we hold on to that because we think that we have the upper hand if we hold them in our hearts but we're only damaging ourselves because forgiveness exactly. is not it's not for if forgiveness is not for them it's for us so you let go if you're holding on to anything right now i want you to let go it this it isn't worth your sanity isn't worth your next level look at what malicia said you know she was able to do that she found her community and now she's thriving she is being able to walk out in her purpose and you can do that too if you only let so Alicia, I really want to thank you so much for coming on tonight and for sharing with us. It was definitely a blessing, you know, having you share here tonight. But before we go, I have to ask, is there any other thing that you would love to share with our viewers tonight that maybe is something I didn't get to ask, but it's something that is resting on your heart that you would want to share with them? Is there anything you would like to let them know? When life gets tough, when life gets hard, just pray and ask the Lord to help you. Seek him and he's right there to comfort you and guide you. And he'll provide the people that that you need to get you where you need to be to fulfill your purpose. That's right. Well said. And once again, I want you to go ahead, tell them about your book, tell them where they can get it, where they can connect with you. You know, guys, I didn't forget <laughs> so that they can be able to reach out to you. Oh, so my book is From Bitterness to Betterness, and it's on Amazon, and my name is Melisha Carter Linton, and um, I am on Instagram at Melisha Carter Writes, on my Facebook page, it's Melisha Carter Writes. Oh, well said. So guys, if you want to get a copy, go right ahead, head on to Amazon. If you want to go and check out Malaysia, go over to her Facebook page or check her out on Instagram. Make sure you send her that message. You know, don't be shy. It's okay. She's going to be responding. I hope you guys have been able to gain from her story today and you are encouraged because let me tell you, I really enjoyed sharing today with you, with Melissa share her story with you. So I want to thank you guys for joining us tonight. And remember, if you have not gotten the opportunity to do that as yet, I want you to go right ahead, share this link with a friend. Don't hesitate. Make sure you put something in the comments below because we want to hear from you. We want to hear your thoughts. You know, talk to us there in the comment section and make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to this channel so that you can be kept abreast. We're going to see you on our next episode so continue to keep on the lookout for us have a good night goodbye Bye.